plot, not just in Italy, but in other places. There are investigations ongoing. There are accusations of all sorts of, well, you know, questionable practices from Deutsche Bank. And uh, it, it seems to me as though there is a, a definite either either Deutsche Bank has become an extreme criminal operation or there is a need to uh, to demonize them, not only in financial circles, but in the public's mind, so that any sort of business that would be dealt with them in any other country would be seen as suspect automatically. Now, the Italians, they have a reputation for, well, corruption, let's be honest, because, uh, look, and, and I say this with a vowel at the end of my name, okay, and uh, <laughs> only a couple of generations here from there, I'll tell you something, uh, corruption and, and Italy go together like hand and glove and glove and hand. Uh, it, it's just that simple uh, because the government often ends up being weak and bought off. Now, I don't know if that prevails to this day, but, I mean, it used to take you months to get a letter from Italy. All right? You know, it, very simple. <laughs> Okay, uh, and, and it did. It would take you, like, you could literally go on vacation in Italy, send yourself a postcard, and come back, you know, three weeks later from Italy, and you might see your letter another six weeks later arrive at your doorstep in America. A little odd. I mean, they can't even run a post office there. That's the way it used to be. Okay, so, you know, Italy has its own history where, you know, you can see them having problems and collapsing and uh, usually through uh, self-inflicted wounds. But this is a little different with Deutsche Bank. I think there's a, a, an agenda at play here to make sure that they cannot be a player in the uh, in the global financial market to try and, you know, paint them with the uh, the ugly side of the stick. I mean, uh, or am I misreading this? No, I think that's probably true. Italy is looking to find a villain for their situation. And since they can't go after the EU Commission for creating the euro, you know, whoever, you know, the elites that created the euro and then the Commission for the Fascist Dictatorship, since they can't go after the euro creators of the currency, they're going to go after the predatory banks. Now, the German banks showed their colors in Greece by demanding, you know, se severe, what they call it, austerity in the, in the Greek budget. And they came in with asset seizures. And it was pretty ugly, a lot of demonstrations, a lot of rioting. People were killed. Banks got messed up. Uh, bank runs in, in, in Greece. Italy doesn't want that. So they're trying to stop it by creating, you know, a villain, uh, by just having a, a tremendous amount of self-purchases of their bonds. And I don't think it's going to work. I think it just extends a little bit of time, and then everything turns to crap. Hola. I don't think they're going to be able to hold things together with the Italian banks. Patches don't work. This isn't about, you know, difficult business conditions, moving mail and things like that. Okay, that, that's, that's all, you know, kind of sexy to hear about, interesting. But we have the banks all across Italy that are failing. They're insolvent, and all you need with an insolvent group of banks is to cut back on liquidity, and you've got some big problems, and that is exactly what I've been talking about, a cutback of liquidity from the Euro Central Bank and the Germans dumping. Okay, you've got your illiquidity right at the doorstep when insolvency's been there for three years. That's my assessment of Italy. Well, right, and the, but the insolvency, the reason why I mentioned the, you know, the operations of government is that when you talk about anybody who would have had oversight <laughs> over any of these financial dealings, forget it. Uh, it, it, it just, it, it's not part of the culture there. there. There's always something bought off, and I'm wondering who's really running this, and is this an engineered collapse? Because, uh, when this does finally go completely south, you know, what kind of pressure is that going to create in the EU? We know that, you know, Italy will have to suffer through something. But uh, but that will change the uh, landscape, won't it? I mean, because it's it's a significant partner in, in, the, uh, in the EU. So, what, you know, what are we talking about as results here when this does finally blow up in, well, somebody's face? Well, they're not trying to engineer a collapse of Italy. They're, they're trying to cut back on the hyper-monetary inflation at the central banks. 
like the Fed and the Euro Central Bank. The Euro Central Bank is just as bad in their African and South American style of hyper-monetary inflation. Uh, they're equal. They're equal villains. Um, it, it's not going to. It's not going well. Um, now the the problem is that the major central banks want to cut back, and they don't want the damage from their cutbacks. But they, they won't be able to avoid it. The U.S. is going to get a recession. We already got a recession. We're in our ninth straight year of the recession. Yeah, I was going to say, when did it end? <laughs> what do you mean we're going to get? We already got, right? <laughs> yeah, well, what you're going to get is a aggravated recession. Ah, there's the term. I mean, you've got a, a chronic recession now, and it's going to turn aggravated. An aggravated chronic recession is what they call a depression. I mean, I'm, I'm just playing with words and semantics here. No one wants to use the word depression for the United States economy. They don't even like much the recession. It's a sluggish recovery. If you're at minus 3% on your growth, that's a sluggish growth. Well, really? All you do is lie by 3% on your inflation and call that 3% growth, and your minus 3 becomes zero, and you're back to sluggish growth. That's what we do. We lie about inflation and call it growth. We've yeah, had 6, 8, 9% inflation for many years. We're calling it 2 and 3, so we're lying by 5% or more, calling it growth. We've got a stuck situation. You don't look at the newspaper to find out what inflation is in the, in the society and economy, Main Street. You look at your utility bill. You look at your food bill. You look at uh, various other things, maybe not so much clothing, uh, you know, fees for water, fees for sewer. Uh, there are property tax hikes that are being called in. And many cities, even though they're in bad shape, just because the cities need more money. They need to, you know, fix their pension shortfalls. I mean, let's not even talk about Dallas. They, that's, you know, a completely different situation. <laughs> but, uh, you yeah. know, Italy, Italy is going down. And they're looking for someone to attach, um, you know, like, like fingernails in the neck and shoulder. Just attach. While they're going down, maybe they can drag down Deutsche Bank. If you see the Italian banks go down like, like two or three, then, then it's six, you're going to see some German banks dead. You're going to see some French banks dead. There's more French bank exposure to Italian debt than there is German bank exposure. That's very little known fact. This is the kind of stuff I put in the hat trick letter, you know, with charts showing, oh, look at that. The biggest bar there is France. The next one is Germany. Wow, France has more Italian debt exposure. I like putting in charts to make them, you know, not just pretty pictures, but tell the story in a way that, you know, you can recall an image in your head six months later. So, oh, yeah, I saw that bar chart. France was number one. <clears throat> This is going it, to, it's, I just don't know when, but it's going to blow in Italy. It's going to blow. Yeah, well, it has to. I mean, it's just, uh, it's kind of inevitable at this point. And it makes it even far more interesting to me that, you know, you have the, uh, the, the Brexit situation, okay, and the threats of other exits, you know, I, I don't know if that would really change the ultimate outcome here, if we have a collapse which leads to well, a, a banking collapse, let's just say, in Italy, that leads to consequences in France, consequences in Germany, you know, I, I don't know that that's going to uh, give anybody a shield, even if they try to exit at this point, which takes a couple of years to do. I, I don't think that that's going to shield anybody from the, uh, from the, the fallout. Now, what, what's fascinating to me is that it's going to have an effect on the U.S. as well, too. Yeah, well, let's. Uh, what I have not addressed yet is what happens to Italy if these things happen. What happens if you have some bank woes? One or two banks go down. We know the candidates. What happens if they take down five banks and cause a contagion in France and Germany? I'll tell you what's going to happen. There's going to be a radical movement inside Italy to abandon the euro, go to the old lira and move perhaps around two-thirds of their debt, whatever is legal, you know, pre-2008, 
EU debt in Italy can move back to the lira. The French have established that now. That was one of the things Le Pen did, even though she had the election stolen from her. She looked into seeing how much of the French government debt could be moved into the French franc because it was pre-EU. And the answer was, I think, around 60%. And I think for Italy, it's a little higher, like 65%. Okay, Italy might go back to the, the lira and devalue their debt by devaluing their currency. And what happens if that is done? Even worse, the effect on the foreign banks that hold their debt.